was specializing as a gynae, uh, as an as an OP gynae, in all the lectures, the chapters, the books, everything that we we, we, we did, there was literally it's not more than two, three pages that spoke about um, sexual health. When I looked at, in terms of papers that have been written around sexual health, they were all geared to, I want to say, not the negative, but, but it had that sense of, when you look at sexual health, mostly you will read about HIV AIDS, sexually transmitted infections, and you will read about pregnancy or teenage pregnancy. All the ills around sexual health, but but there are very few papers written about umnandi botanzi. I don't know. Right? About sex, about whether we are talking to our children, whether we are talking as peers, whether we are talking in the academic space, whether we are talking in our cultural context, it doesn't have to be inappropriate, it doesn't have to be degrading, it doesn't even have to mean that is the position you are taking. There is a privacy about our sexual lives that you can keep for yourself, but to engage in the topic, we cannot run away from that anymore. And I will tell you an experience that broke my heart, I never forget. I had just finished, I just qualified as a gynae and I was working in a hospital called the Radom in Johannesburg. Um, I came in in the morning, I was the consultant that was taking in theater that day. I walked in, now in, in, in Gaini, you don't see children, you don't see pediatric patients, right? You, you generally will see older, uh, um, you know, women in their reproductive age. At best, you will see teenagers, maybe. I had a four-year-old in my theater case as my first patient that day. I walked in, one of the junior doctors explained to me and they relayed the story. This is a four-year-old. She was brought in the previous day. She was actually in the pediatric unit, but has been booked for theater so that you can check. She was abused by an unknown somebody who raped her, um, and there were so many uh, tears. She needs to be repaired in theater. Four-year-old. Four-year-old. And um, generally in theater, you'll find the anibetrists. Sometimes you have one or two juniors that you are with. And, and the anibetrists, by a time, you must say theater because it's usually you spend the whole day there. They will bring a music. It's a, it's a party for the whole day. It keeps us, you know, we are working, but that day it was quiet, dead silent. I I sutured with my tears running. And I said, it should never be so. It, it should never be so. So why am I going on and on about this? I want to start with when we don't talk about sex and sexuality, First of all, we suppress the ability for our children to grow up with the language, to grow up with the confidence, and to grow up with the safe space of being able to come to someone when something is not okay. To come to you, I always say as parents, we're supposed to be the safe pair of hands. You don't have to understand necessarily what your child is going through, but if they know, they can come to you. I won't say who it is. I had a chat with a young a young man in, in this conference and they said, Yo, no, I'll never talk to my parents about this. I'll never talk to my parents. So what happens when they are being peer pressured to do things they are uncomfortable with and they can't run to you? 
right? So those are the sides that are difficult, but they are important. We need to find ways and the language to talk about these things and allow Abandwana to grow up with that kind of confidence. I'm going to move from there and say, um, I don't, I, I touch a lot on the, on the, on the, on the women's side or on the female side. I promise next time I'll bring a, a colleague of mine, he's a urologist, Professor Tamiro, amazing, amazing. And I'll say part of the reason that I have focused in, in, in women is because I said, if you look around, how many men's health clinics do you know? And our parents used to say, when you start your period, close your legs, go to school, get married, get a great job, and then you can, right? You, you, you know, and then to, to express yourself sexually. And, and, and quite a lot, of, a lot of people from that generation, we did that. You know, we, we, we did that. It, it, was, it was seen as a pride thing to keep yourself until you were in a comfortable relationship to be able to express yourself. Can, can we teach our kids? Can we talk to our children? Can we hear what they've got to say? I've even said, when people say, when do you start talking about sex to children? And I said, you can't think you're gonna be able to talk about sex to a child when you don't even know who they are because you've never in your life spent time just asking them, what do you like? What do you enjoy? Oh, today, I'm someone about the gymnastics. Oh, okay, yeah, let's try this one. Let's try that. We need to be invested in what matters to our children. That's how we start creating those spaces. And I, I genuinely believe when we start <coughs> mending the families, the fiber of the families, the relationships in our families, things get better. 